all of uh, he was running, he was defeated in his, in his last attempt to be reelected. Now he's in this race. Uh, he's at a, in the District 6, which is at large. So he has spoken here three or four times before. Uh, Don is a native of Florida, went through the public school system here. And Don, would you like to please come on?
because the time I did get to spend was the most very precious time to me. Now, let's go on to the other things, the bad things that people tell you they've heard about me. Um, I missed ethics training. There's a brand new law that just took effect. I missed it by two days to sign up for it. Now, to explain to you what happens when you do something like that, somebody complains, and you have to go stand in front of the ethics board. Now, I took the time to go to Tallahassee. Went and stood in front of the ethics board. Let me tell you what, folks. There's only one other group of people that I would say is scarier than them. That happens to be Bupec. <laughs> so when I went up there, the lady chair said, Mr. Armstrong, here's the thing that you was, um, you know, they quoted the statute and said, this is what you're being accused of. Would you like to explain yourself? And this was this past summer. I was still dealing with that. So I stood up there. And I said, yes, ma'am, I'll be more than happy to explain myself to you. I said, here's the explanation. I made a mistake. Point one. I overlooked and didn't read my email thoroughly. And it was my mistake. I said, I teach my kids to actually own their mistakes. Well, that's what I'm up here doing tonight. And the lady said, Mr. Armstrong, most of the elected officials that blow us off, they don't show up. And the ones that do show up have every excuse in the world. This is the first time we've ever had anyone show up and own it. She goes, I don't see no further action. Case dismissed. And I left. Because I owned it, which is what we try to teach our kids. So those are the things that I believe that I've done incorrectly, how I can improve on those is easy. When I went up to the ethics board, I found something else out. Some information that was very useful to all of us here. The ethics training that we pay for through the Lee County School District. We don't have to pay for it. None of our elected officials has to pay for it. Our board attorney can give the same training to every one of our local elected officials. The lady even read it to me in the statute and explained it to me. Think about the money we can save. It's a lot of money. It's your taxpayers' money. So I've, t I've learned to take negative things and turn them into something positive every single time. Now let's talk about the school district and where we're going and what my beliefs are with that. I still don't believe in school choice. I believe we need to have a hybrid system. Even one of my opponents is the reason why we have school choice today, but the proof's in the pudding. It's not working. We're spending thousands and thousands of dollars busing kids from one end to the next. I'll get to them all in a little bit. I'm a little long-winded today, sorry. So we bus kids all over the place. I've even seen kids bus from Pine Island to North Fort Myers. It's a long bus ride. Now, one of the things the new superintendent has done is he's talked about shrinking the zones and making where the parents have smaller choices. And I agree with that. Um, you still have a type of school choice, but we're not busing kids everywhere. Less time on the bus, more time in classrooms, more education. Because folks, after all, isn't that what we're here for to make sure our kids get the best education that we can? Now, the other thing is, is speaking of the education and the busing and the waste of money, <coughs> the business. there's the other thing that I believe we need to start looking at a little bit more closely. Matter of fact, um, 
that was an idea that was brought to the board, and it was never implemented. And I agreed with it at the time, um, and I still agree with it, and I still think we need to implement it. Now, actually, you know, I give credit where credit's due. Um, one of the board members is actually here today who came up with the idea, and it's Ms. Kathleen Morgan. Her idea was start looking at the programs. Are they working? And I agreed with her at the time, and I still agree with her. I think we need to start looking at all of our programs. We pay for the licenses to use these programs. We need to start looking at the data very closely. Is it worth it? And if it's not worth it, why are we still paying for it? Isn't it your money? So, that is the other part of this. Now, we have to start looking at also our buildings. One of the things that I've seen uh, just recently, one of our schools, we're out there replacing fences in schools, not because the fences are falling down, they just don't look as great. But we have another school over the summer that because we didn't have the money, we only replaced 70% of the roof. That's wrong to me, because that means that rotation on that roof, we're going to have to go back later and hire a company to go back on the roof and replace the other 30% of that roof. But we're out there replacing fences that really don't need to be replaced just yet. Now, replacing these roofs is very important, because when we replace a roof, we're actually going to save money on energy. It helps uh, insulate the roofs, and that's the other part of this. That you need somebody like me on the board who understands things like this. See folks, I'm not an educator. You're right. I'm the only candidate in this race that's not a lifelong educator. I'm a construction worker. I'm a plumber. I'm a project manager. Being a project manager means I basically have to watch a budget. <coughs> I have to watch my budget very closely because I do have an owner who will yell at me. He's Italian and he really does have a big mouth. Bigger than mine. But that's part of why I am the right candidate. I have made mistakes. I've owned my mistakes. But see, here's the difference. I was at the board meeting last night. I was the only one there in my race. That was actually at the board meeting. That was listening to what people was talking about, all board members. And you know what I seen there last night? I didn't see a board. I seen a team. That's what I saw, a team of people working together. They had different ideas, but they still worked together. That's what I want to be part of, a team. Not the controversy, not the fighting, not the argument. People that work together for the same goal. To improve our education system. To help our kids. We've actually, I've seen this school district lately going in a different direction. But there's still work to be done. There's still a lot of work to be done out there. Some people are going to say, Mr. Armstrong, you opted out of the testing. That was wrong. But there's a lot of people, a lot of counties, who are now talking about doing the same thing. Because they realize what's going on with all this testing and the common core and how bad it is. And somebody said that uh, well, the only reason you was going to opt out your own kids was for political reasons. And if you opt your kids out of the testing, they're not going to graduate. They're not going to move on to the next grade. Well, let's keep this a secret. I opted my kids out last year. And don't tell anybody that they went on to the next grade this year. We'll just keep that our secret. And you know what? I'm proud of both my kids. 
AMD students. Speaking of uh, students and AMD students, I do want to use a little shameless plug today while I'm at it. Tomorrow night at 7 o'clock at Cypress Lake High School, you have the All County Orchestra. I know she's shaking her head. I'll be there as well. So I'd like to invite everybody to show up there tomorrow night. Now the reason why I'm going to put that shameless plug in, my daughter's in there too. Second year in a row, she's been invited to that. So yeah, I'm a dad. I've got great kids. I'm also the only kid who has kids. I do have a reason to work very hard and work with the board that's up there right now. Work with the superintendent to continue to lead us in the right direction. But we can't do it alone, folks. We need your help. We need everybody's help. This has got to be a community effort. As I've come in here before, and I've talked to several people who've given me constructive criticism, what I did right, what I did wrong. Um, I think I should say this today, but I will anyways. This one person that I uh, I knew was, wasn't my opponent, was a supporter last time around. I actually took the opportunity to call him just recently, um, Mr. Lee Jones. So I wanted to hear what he had to say. I thought it was important to hear the things that I didn't do right. Because I have to be a better board member, which means I have to learn from my mistakes. That's what we're trying to teach our kids. But see, here's the important thing about our kids. We can give them all the tools in the world, but initially what we're trying to teach our kids to do is to be their own best teacher. Because when we get out there in the real world, these kids, they've got to learn to solve problems. And we have to give them the tools. And we have to give them the opportunity to learn how to solve all these problems. I'll get to them in our house. <laughs> these kids are really important to me. A while back when I was on the board, I got invited to a political event. Now, I was also invited to a school. And they was doing a fun day at school. Now, this political event, I could have met a lot of highly influential people. Or I could go hang out with the kids and the teachers and do what I'm supposed to. Guess what, folks? That day, I sat in dunk tank all day long. I let the kids still ball at me and run up there and dunk me in. Even some of the teachers would actually run behind the cage and hit the button just to dunk the board member. That was one of the best times I can remember. I don't regret it. But let's start talking about some other things. We have the Benita School. I'm sure you all heard about this recently. Now, do I believe we need a high school in that area? Absolutely, we do. I've seen it. I've looked at the data. But I don't think we also need to make any hasty rush in building a new school in the wrong property. We've done this in the past. We've built schools just because the land was available. And what would we end up having? Well, about five or six different elementary schools within a 10 mile radius. Something doesn't seem right there. We built these schools and instead we're not filling them now because we've built so many and just what land we can find. We need to start looking at these schools, build them the correct way, also build them to where we can actually add on to them. So you're going to say, well, what are we going to do about the population now for the time being? That's funny you ask, because I've talked to the superintendent, and he likes the idea that I brought up a while back. Let's add on to these schools. Add on to the existing schools for the time being, and 
until we can find the property that's going to work. Now, here's the other problem we're going to run into that. Um, one of our, your, your president here has touched on it several times. How are you going to pay for that school? I don't believe in the half-cent sales tax, that's a fact. I've never deviated from that. Anytime I've been on the board, somebody says, uh, let's do a half-cent sales tax. Nope, not happening. I'm not going to vote for that. I don't believe it's the right thing to do. But I do believe, because of impact fees, and yes, there is impact fees now, because our community is growing rapidly. Trust me, I'm out there every day in it. We can start adding to some of these schools. South Fort Myers High, Cypress Lake High. We can add over, we can add up. We can do some different things. Because we look at some of the other cities out there, metropolitan cities, they don't have land to build, so what do they do? They plan ahead. They go to find these empty shopping malls. They build onto them, use them. There's no sense to run out there and spend $65 million on a new high school in a bad area where we're going to interrupt the people that's there without communicating with people either. I know I've talked to these people. They didn't know it until they saw it in front of them. Well, they also deserve the right to see what's going on and to be heard. These are good people. Matter of fact, I believe that if we would actually go out to these communities and talk to them, we would find out these are some very intelligent people and they have some creative ideas of how they can, we can improve the school system, build a better school. Because that's what's important to us. We have to build up, build it over, and take advantage of what we can. So somebody's going to say, well, we have some of these kids in portables right now. What do we do about that? Okay, portables are not that bad, people. I built clubhouses with portables. That's not the end-all, be-all. But for a temporary solution, they're okay. Some of these portables that we use or I've seen are probably nicer than some of the homes I built. They have a lot of, um, as a matter of fact, we own a lot of portables. So there is solutions out there. But it's our responsibility to come here and talk to people like yourselves. Okay, go ahead. I mean, what is your platform now that has changed since you were on the board before? My platform now. It still stays similar. To get rid of somewhat of school choice. Transparency. One of the things that I'd like to see done now is put our budget detailed back online where it needs to be, so you as a taxpayer can see every day where your money is being spent. Transparency to me is very important, very key. One of the things I do want to do personally, and I'll make that promise today, that once I'm re-elected, or once I'm elected back on the board, that I will take every three months, I will come to BUPAC, and different organizations tell you where we're at, where we want to go, and then listen to you tell me what you think we're doing wrong. One of the things I've learned, because you, you brought up some really good point here, was I don't represent just a few people. Being a board member, I represent everybody collective thoughts. And that's what's important, to listen to everybody and then bring it back to the board. This is what my constituents are talking about. This is where we're going. And you see, being on the board, I've got a unique experience 
then what my other two opponents do right now. Why is that? See, when you're a board member, it's completely different than sitting out in that audience. It takes a good year or two to understand and to grasp what's going on on board. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this, this job, because it is a job, it's only two year term. Well, the question is, do you want to have somebody who you're going to pay that's just to learn the job? Or somebody like myself who's already been there, who understands it, who can hit the ground running, who understands already what these issues are, who also understands how to go out to them. communities like yourself, groups like yourself who can talk to them, and even when you have to listen to that constructive criticism, who can take it on the chin, and go back and say, look, all right, that wasn't, that wasn't the correct decision. We need to do this. Yes, sir, I know you've been patient. Um, you started off with your introduction about how our tax dollars have been spent. We've had some pretty dire presentations on the state of the board's budget. Uh, Could you address that for us and how you would fix it? And just as an aside, as someone who substitutes pretty regularly, the affordable will suck. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are the portables. When uh, there used to be a school called Pine Island Elementary in Middle. Okay, the reason why I know the middle part is that it was Pine Middle School. It was all made out of portables. The portals we were talking about are actually small little portables. They have bigger portables that join together. Um, and quite honestly, the brick and mortar doesn't make the kids learn any faster or any less. It's the great teachers that we have, the great communities that we have. That's what makes these teachers or these students learn. Now, when you talk about what would I do with the finances and how to improve that, yeah, you you've heard that we have some issues. We have uh, almost $1.5 billion budget, 95,000 students. We have a big school district. That's a fact. But again, we need to start looking at the transportation. Let's go back to the audit that your taxpayers spent money on. Let's start following that audit and start finding ways to shave off some of this extra spending because folks we have two different types of budgets and i'm not sure if everybody knows that but we have the capital and we've got the operating budget um does not like it a little heavy on the administration side um i believe some of the administrators that's in downtown um can go back out to the schools and teach and do things like that why because we're short on teachers and we can all pitch in. And I like that idea. I think that would work. Because also bring, remind them why they're doing this. Everybody. So that would save a little money as well. Now the other thing we can start looking at, like you know, like I've said before, looking at some of our you know programs that we use and start looking at the data, are they will is it actually working? Some of the reading programs that we use, the math programs that we use. Is any of this really working? And then we have to go back and look at that data and decide that we want to continue to spend that money. No, because I've seen some of these programs myself and they're not working in the full capability that we need them to. Then we have to start looking at, again, we go to the transportation. You know, when um, I was on board, some of the simplest things can save us a lot of money. One of the things uh, I uh, led the charge on was moving some of these bus stops, joining them together, putting them under street lights, because let's face it, some of these kids standing outside at very dark on a corner, it's not good. I drive early in the morning, I see this, it's scary. And these kids don't pay attention. 
But by doing that, what I found out, we saved almost a million dollars. The initial reason behind why we did it wasn't to save money. But when we started crunching numbers and looking at it, it was like 900 and something thousand dollars total that we saved. And that's because we could put more kids on the bus, be more efficient. And that was just in Cape Coral. That's what we could do if we did it all over. So yes, we do have a lot of room for improvement with the bus. <coughs> but see, I don't have every answer either. I won't claim to have every answer. <coughs> what I do is, I have people like yourselves I can come out to and tell you here's the issues that we have. And listen to what they have to say. Listen to what you're going to tell me. Because we're all in this together. It's not just me and yes, I know you had your hand up. I'm sorry. Um, John, you won an election last time. It was an interesting win because here you were, uh, not well educated, a person who had uh, many issues as a young person, and uh, you defeated a guy who was very well educated, he was a, a currently a lawyer, an Eagle Scout, and you beat him. How did that happen? <laughs> How did that happen? That's a real question, and I'm wondering what you think. I'll tell you how that happened. That's the reason why it didn't happen this last time. Because I went out there the first time, and I was just me. I didn't try to play politics. I didn't tell you what you wanted to hear. I told you what I thought. And people believed in what I had to say. And when I told you, told you the story earlier that I had to contact somebody and ask them what I did wrong, that's one of the things they told me I did wrong. I wasn't being mean, being true to myself. And I had to take a long look on that conversation. And they was right. You know, the most bitter pill you have to swallow is to call somebody that you know is going to be a critic. You know they're going to tell you something bad. You're not going to like it. But if I don't learn from it, grow from it, how can I be a better board member? So to answer your question, I was me. I went out there and talked to people. Listen to what everybody had to say. Not just a select few. And that's what I'm telling you I'm doing now. I'm listening to what people have to say. Whether he was my supporter, whether he was my critic. But I listened to you. And I realized we are in this together to make sure that we don't waste money. Throw it out the window. Make sure our kids get the best education. Now, matter of fact, I will. Last time I was here, I was asked a question. What do I think of the standards? And I stumbled on that question a little bit. But I learned something from that question too. I went back and I studied the standards. I looked it up. Asked me a big question. And instead of doing what I should have done, I said, you know what? I don't understand it thoroughly. Can I call you back? I tried to stumble through it. Now, what can I tell you about the standards? Why I don't like them? The vague. I went back and looked at them. The next day, I went and studied them. I don't believe the way they've written, they give too much interpretation. But as a board member, those are the things we have to do, a lot of homework, a lot of study, and when we run across questions. There's no board member on that board now, or before, or in the future, that is ever going to know it all and have every answer. The key is to know where to find the answers. The key is to realize what people you go talk to and I'm not steering you in the wrong direction for their own personal self-gain, but are really legitimately trying to be there to help you. Now, 
Is it a very important job? Yes, it is. Absolutely. Um, you don't get a pat on the back. You don't get people to tell you a great job. You get people that, when they do call you, they'll yell, they'll mad. And you listen to what they have to say. And I have. Um, there has been times that uh, I got an email from one of your gentlemen that belongs here. That liked something I did. But he said something in that email that has stuck with me for over a year. I don't believe God makes any trash. And you're right there. God doesn't. And he said, if you ever get a chance again, please make the best of it and learn from your mistakes. Well, that's what I'm also here doing today. I do want to learn from my mistakes. And that means coming out here talking to you more and more. Yes, sir. Go back to finances. You drew the distinction between that way and capital. Um, my understanding is that we have pretty much borrowed what we can borrow from construction and are reduced to stealing money from operating to build. Uh, unless you can find a couple hundred billion dollars in waste, which is a lot of uh, bus stop consolidation, uh, how are we going to cover the needs for these new schools? Well, you're correct on one part, but we can only borrow one time. Um, Florida statute only gives us right to borrow one time swap it over from operating capital. But what you're talking about is a couple hundred million dollars. That's four or five different schools in a 10 year period of time. Um, depends on which school you're talking about, uh, high school. So around $65 million is what it costs. Now, we don't need every one of those schools. You don't think we need four schools in 10 years? We do, but what we have to look at first is what schools do we have? I can tell you right now, we have schools that are at 60% capacity. Well, should we start looking at filling some of these schools up first? Those are where we need to start concentrating. What's wrong with these schools? Some of the kids in those areas don't want to go to that school. But why? Those are the things the board needs to start looking at. And start moving forward. And start figuring out What's wrong with that school? How to improve that school? And put the money back into that school. Not running out building five more schools. And the worst part is, what you don't realize, it hurts me not to build schools. I'm a construction worker. I built these schools. I know I'm inside now. But I'm also a taxpayer. I'm also wanting to come out here and represent each one of you. And that means being fiscal responsible. And I can prove to you that I'm, I am fiscal responsible. As you, as it was mentioned earlier, what made me win the last race? Well, do you realize on my first race I ran, I think I only spent $3,000 versus $27,000. I learned to do more with less which is what we need to learn to do. More with less. It can be done. You know, when we, yes ma'am, I know. Um, I have now acknowledged in appreciate what you said about learning on the job the first time and you've got to make some mistakes and were led by some forces that you decided later was not in your interest to have done and that you changed your path on several, in several areas. Would you explain the mistakes you felt you made and the change of position you took? Well, and I don't want to say that because these people are no, no longer around. Um, but some of the mistakes I made, I, I listened to, I believe they were self-serving people for their own benefit and trying to use me as a tool to get what they want, to get back to different people. Now, there was times that they would say, hey, you know, you need to throw that out there. And I would, because I thought that was the right thing. I believed that they were being 
forward was being truthful. And I come to find out later that they wasn't. It was just self-serving for his own personal gain. I involved in the school district. Um, I go to the meetings. I watch the meetings. I'm at work last night at 5.30. I have my phone, my earphones in. I'm listening to the board meeting. Because I want to know what's going on. Because I have two kids, two 11-year-olds. Did I mention going to Cypress Lake High School tomorrow night, everybody? I, I'm waiting for everybody. Yeah, I'll see you there. Oh. Could I ask one follow-up question? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um,
It shows that these kids were learning rapidly, learn how to read, learning to comprehend. Not just reading, but comprehend what they read. And we stopped using it. Folks tell me, why wouldn't we stop using the program? That works. So we're going to substitute with something else that's not working? That's quite a question. I noticed that you have a pin on your left side. And I would like you to tell us what that means and why it's important to you. Thank you for asking that. The pen is on my left hand side. Okay? It's a constitutional pen of Chris Ann Hall. Now, it's a four hour course you have to go through. When I decided I was going to run again, I decided there was something else I needed to learn more about. Because I'm not sure many of you know this. But each elected official is considered a constitutional officer. You swear to uphold the Florida Constitution and the United States. Would it be a better board member? I need to learn more about it to know what I'm representing. Because believe it or not, I found what a lot of people don't know about the Constitution and understand it thoroughly. Matter of fact, um, the very first time I went and seen Chris Ann Hall, I bought it. Well, it's my kids. I want them to learn about the Constitution. And to me, that's some of the things that we do need to bring back in there. Is to teach these kids about the Constitution, their rights, and your rights. Now, I'm proud of this pen, and I do work quite, quite frequently. And the thing is, is there's some things that's actually going on in the school district that I've never been really keen on. That I've now that it's being fixed, I still ain't happy because I've realized more and more things. We have kid, my kids just started learning to write cursive last year. I ran into kids in high school that are starting to learn to write cursive for the Common Core. Now, some schools actually teach cursive, even though it's not the curriculum. Not all of them. But speaking of the Constitution, I want to tell you something else that I'm proud of that I've done. Now, a little over a year ago, I was listening to a local radio show, uh, 92.5, New Steel, I'm sure some of you have heard of it. Well, I heard a teacher call in. <coughs> teacher says, um, you know, we were told we can't teach about 9-11. It's not the test. I was shocked. I saw him go. I'm like, are you kidding me? 9-11? Isn't that important for kids to learn? Well, I went back. And this is probably one of my biggest lessons I've ever learned. As I made a motion that we teach about 9-11 every year on or around the anniversary. Because I thought it was important for our kids to know it. But I learned something myself that day. As I made the motion, I had a dialogue with fellow board members at that time. We learned to work together, to work as a team, to pass that motion that every year, every grade, these kids learn about 9-11. And that itself is important to me. That they learn about it, and that I learned how to work with the board as a team. So, yes, sir. I'd like to go back to money. Money. Tell <coughs> yeah, my daughter now. Yeah. In the last four or five years, I don't think we've spent a lot of money capital wise. Yet my taxes did not go way, way, way down. They went five percent maybe or something to begin with. Where is all this capital money? I would think it would be bursting at the seams if you didn't take it and use it for something else. It's a good question. Uh, so, can I follow that up one thing? Who are you running against? Well, I have two opponents. And 
I'm not going to throw their names out there because it's just not play. You know, I mean, I try not to beat anybody up. I try to hold a very positive campaign. But I will tell you, one of the gentlemen that's in my race is also a good friend of mine. That I can tell you. He's a dear friend of mine. And I adore him to death. We've always had very respectful matter of fact, he invited me to this fundraiser. And I will go, actually. My kids will go, my kids. We sat down with this gentleman, me and my kids. We've had lunch, we've had dinner. We've been to his uh, nature, park. nature park. He's enjoyed my kids' company and I've enjoyed his. So I, I have nothing ill to say. And the capital money, where is <laughs> Hold on. Line of questions. Not back here either. No, really. No. <laughs> Capital money. You know, we spend a lot of money on buying buses. Buying buses. We spend a lot of money on repairing these schools. We have hundred and something schools all together. That's where our capital money is being spent on. Buses. <laughs> On buses, new buses, repairs on buses. We have school repairs that we have to do. But I don't agree with a lot of the ways that we're spending the money. Matter of fact, you said that um, in the past four or five years, your taxes have gone up, correct, by about 5%? Yeah. Was that correct? No, they went down a little bit. They're going back up now, but they didn't go down. Tremendously. So therefore, you should still have a ton of money in the capital. <laughs> so, the last year I was on the board, what board member voted to have no feeling? But I've learned to manage a budget and to do more with less. That's one of the things that I want to do on the board as well, to do more with less. Now, when we start talking about where the money at, those are things that we need to look at. Because I question that several different times. Because we continue to buy bus parts. And then a few months later you see on the agenda, we're going to buy some more bus parts. Well, when do you stop buying all these parts? Because after a while you buy so many parts, you probably could have bought two or three buses. And if it's costing us that much money to maintain some of these buses, rotate them, get them out of here, sell them at an auction, buy another bus, stop spending the money on them. I don't know how many times I've watched buses broke down on the side of the road. And why is that bus still in active duty? So to answer your question, a lot of the money is being spent with our, on bus parts, transportation issues. It's being spent on maintaining schools. As I said, you know, some of that money is put fences up that we don't need. Um, one of the things that really torques me every time I've seen this was the school, the principal. <laughs> Decides they want a new desk. Because the one that had last year wasn't that good. Are you guys trying to tell me I'm long-winded today? Yeah. <laughs> My highest level of education. Matter of fact, I've actually got a couple of degrees people don't know about. Because um, I've never put it out there and I don't. I'm a, believe it or not, I've got a computer technician degree as well. I went to school to learn how to work on computers. I've also met gas certified, but I've stuck in the plumbing industry and there's a reason why. I like building things. I like going out there, I like walking away. Um, River Hall Elementary, who's heard of River Hall? It's one of our elementary schools in the East. I built it. Sandville Toll Plaza, I built it. So 
But it's a question, you know, I've done a lot of instruction. I like doing it. You know, and... So is your highest level of high school education? Correct. I went to Marina High. So do you have a contractor's license or just on job as project manager? I work for a company that I've been working for on and off for almost 14 years now. Um, Common Core is a switch to Common Core. How much does that cost the district? A lot. A lot. You want me to put a figure on that one? Hold on, let me get my calculator out. How much time you guys got? Not much. Because I'm going to need a few hours to figure that one out. Quite honestly, it's, it's costing the district thousands on top of thousands on top of millions. It's common core, you also have all the testing to go along with it. You know, and they tell you that um, we don't use common core anymore. That's what they'll tell you. But they're wrong. It's just called Florida Standards. All they did is, I believe, um, please correct me if I'm wrong, because I know Ms. Crackenbush is an expert. Two or three percent on that is all they have to change. One, one percent, and they can name it something else. But you know, I've got an email from a teacher who said, Mr. Armstrong, they told us to mark out everything in the book that says Common Core, black it out, so it doesn't get sent home. It's still Common Core. I don't care how you slice it up. Yes, sir, I know you uh, you, uh, you said earlier that there were good schools and, and, and other schools that may not be as successful within the district. Can you share with us your understanding of what makes a school a good school? Are there any key ingredients there? There's a lot of key ingredients in those schools that make it an excellent school. A, community participation. That's a major thing. The staff, the principals. Uh, my kids go to North Marsh County of the Arts. Um, it's a great school, it's an arts program. The community embraces that school. That school embraces the community. That principal can go out and ask for money from the community to help support the art program. And the community will actually start dipping into little pockets. And I think Mr. Fox is telling me something. I, we have one more question. She's been having a <coughs> that one later. Okay. Well, then so we have. Um, I'll answer your question later. Okay, well, let's not uh, thank you guys, everybody, for uh, staying on uh, the program at Cypress Lake High School tomorrow night should be a lot of fun. So uh, if you can make it, be great. And don't forget the quality of life, good organization, uh, keep them in mind. Yeah. Our next speaker next week will be Chris Patrika. She's here with us. She's also running for the school board. And this is going to be a very interesting year in elections, the school board of elections. Thank you very much, everyone. Remember, invite a guest next week.